Hi everyone, it's Brian Botkiller, and in today's Tech Tuesday, we're taking a look at the Supermicro X10 DAI Dual Xeon motherboard, and uh, this, I think, looks to be one of the most solid workstation motherboards that um, I've had my hands on that is also Dual Xeon. I'm just going to show it to you. I don't have the retail box of this. This is just the bare bones la um, motherboard, so just going to go over some quick features. Uh, it features, of course, Dual Xeon. These are LGA 2011-3 slots, so you are going to be able to use, uh, of course, the latest Xeon processors in this board. You wouldn't want to, nor I believe could you use i7s in this, because why would you do that? You wouldn't be able to use two processors, so why would you do that? Um, Feature-wise, uh, it's pretty impressive, mostly because it's going to give you uh, the maximum amount of RAM slots that you can get in an extended ATX uh, motherboard, uh, which is great. You're going to get eight slots per CPU socket, and this board supports up to, I believe, a terabyte of RAM. I don't know why you would end up going that big for most uh, usage at home or in the studio, but hey, you never know. If you want to go big, you can go big. And uh, it features... A decent amount of SATA ports, uh, and you know, of course, you could maybe get more on some other boards, but this is going to give you six, which for most usages is okay. If you really need to expand beyond that, you could use expansion cards in your PCIe slots. Uh, which, speaking of which, you're going to get three of the full size and three of the sort of quarter size slots. So. You can support your standard graphics cards, and you can also support like add-in cards, audio cards, things along those lines in the smaller slots. Uh, taking a look at one of the things I always look at on a board, the fan headers, which is just honestly really important to me. There's a lot of them, and they're easily accessible, which I love. The ones that I would use for standard CPU coolers, which usually would have at least two fans, are located right next to the CPU sockets which I really like. There's also a number of extra ones. You have one just past the RAM slots for your second CPU socket. You've also got one down here on the south bridge, one very near to that as well, and then one all the way up on the north bridge as well, which is quite nice. I like having a lot of fan headers. What can I say? They are incredibly useful. I don't like running machines hot. I like to be able to connect a lot of fans. Uh, everything else on this board is relatively standard. It does have USB 3.0 header connectors on it, which is quite nice because a lot of dual Xeon boards actually don't have that. Another thing I do enjoy about this board is that all of your power connectors, including your ATX and your 12 volt rails, are both located very close to each other. I have run into dual Xeon boards where your second 12 volt rails are located way down on the south bridge. And it's really annoying for being able to cable things up nicely. I am not a fan of that at all. So I really like the overall layout of the board. And this is stuff that when you get down to building a system, it really does matter because it makes life a lot easier or a lot harder in the long run. And real quickly, let's just look at the back connectors because this is something that is important. This is what I like about this board and what makes a good workstation board. Unlike most dual Xeon boards, it actually has a decent amount of connectors for your USB devices, audio devices, things along those lines. It also has audio, which is another big thing. You're not going to get that on most Xeon boards. You may not need that, but it is a cool feature. And you're going to get four USB 3s and two USB 2s plus dual Intel Ethernet ports. So quite a lot of features on a board that, you know, honestly would not usually maybe be used for audio, video production, things like that. Dual Xeons uh, often don't have this kind of stuff. This one does, and that's something that I do really like about this board. So that's just a quick look at the Supermicro X10 DAI motherboard. Um, and, you know, as I say, I have built with super micro boards in the past, but not in a little while. And lately, I've been finding that super micro really is the only dual Xeon motherboard uh, manufacturer that's going to offer a lot of the features that I find that I really need in a dual Xeon board. 
so overall, it seems like it's going to be a good board. I'm going to build on it, and if there's anything tweaky that I find or weird, I'll let you guys know. But otherwise, if, I think if you're looking for a good, solid dual Z on board, this guy is going to do it. So if you have questions, comments, or anything along those lines, of course, as always, please feel free to get in touch with me. Find me on my website, your favorite social media accounts, websites, etc., etc., etc. And thanks, as always, for tuning in to Tech Tuesday, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. You've read lies.